Well, congratulations on being nominated for your work on this documentary series. Uh, yeah, I would love to to just delve right in and, and start from um, how you got involved in, in Murder and Bighorn. Sure. Um, yeah, thank you very much. I'm super psyched about it because obviously like you know, the ASC is full of all my professional heroes. So, you know, this, this means a lot to be recognized there. Um, yeah. So yeah, Murder and Bighorn is a three-part Showtime series. Uh, I shot uh, DP the entirety of it um, and it's directed by Matthew Galkin and Roselle Benali. And it basically, you know, explores a lot of the broader systemic issues that underpin uh, the, you know, or, or have led to the missing and murdered indigenous women's uh, movement out on, you know, some of the reservations in Eastern Montana, specifically on the Northern Cheyenne and the Crow reservations. Um, and Matthew, who was the, you know, one of the directors on this project, he and I have been teaming up for years on a lot of different stuff for Showtime and HBO and, and Amazon. And so I knew about this, like, from, you know, the very, very beginning, he had, uh, he had let me know that this was possibly in the works. And, um, you know, and I'm psyched to do, you know, anything in partnership with him, because we're just like, you know, super creatively in sync. And I really respect like what, you know, what he does on projects to take it all the way through. And, and this is my first time working with Rizal, uh, you know, who, who was also one of our directors on this. And, you know, she was fantastic as well. And I just, it was, it's, you know, it's so nice to be on a team where everybody feels, you know, perfectly in sync. So at least with what you're driving towards creatively. Yeah, no, that's, that's always really important. Um, yeah, I mean, you're obviously working with really um, delicate and hard, true subject material with this documentary. I'd love to, to kind of talk a little bit about how you, uh, you know, as the the camera person, uh, went up went about kind of having that delicacy. Yeah, I mean, so my background, I was a photojournalist for like eleven years before I switched into film. So you know, mostly like long form social documentary, um, magazine work, pretty much all over the world. Um, and I think that was a great training ground for just like learning how to walk into a space and move into a space. I did that for. Yeah, about 11 years before switching into DPing. And, um, you know, I, I think one of the biggest things is just how you present yourself to folks, right? You want to come in with like a soft footprint. You want to be like kind. You want to be empathetic. You want to be professional. Um, and you just want to be open to, you know, what your what people are going to to give to you, to what they're, you know, what you can receive from them. And I'm like, I'm constantly blown away by the fact that like we can, you know, just by virtue of having a camera, people are, you know, and and establishing a relationship and and letting them know that like you are there with their best interest in heart and that you are coming at it like from a very open place. Like I'm constantly amazed at, you know, the fact that people do open their lives to you, you know, and not and and it's a combination of things, right? Like you're there sometimes for incredibly tragic you know, moments. And then sometimes you're there for incredibly joyful moments. And then sometimes you're there for like, you know, the hyper mundane. Um, and yeah, I just think it's, it's like such an incredible gift that people are willing to, you know, be seen and willing to have you be there and be present, uh, in, you know, in some incredible, incredibly intimate moments. But I think so much of it really does have to do with like, the relationship building, right? So you don't just walk in like cameras blazing. It's very much about like establishing a rapport and like moving slowly and moving kindly and like, you know, just just trying to be as light of a footprint as possible. And I think, you know, I'm thankful to have that background as a still photographer too, because, you know, I, I was used to sort of gaining access to places and, and being in like very sensitive situations and just doing that solo. And so now, you know, being able to do that with the team where everybody is like, you know, bringing that same mentality, I think just, you know, it really expands on what you can do. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to to talk about, you know, your thought process behind creating the visual aesthetic of the doc, because uh, it, it has such a, 
a beautiful like filmic softness to it. I'd love to talk about, you know, any inspirations you had and how you came to that. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, I think there were a few things like uh, we wanted it to be incredibly intimate and incredibly naturalistic. Um, and I think, again, coming from that photojournalism background, I'm, I'm really used to working with natural light and just watching natural light and seeing how that, you know, unfolds. And so that's always my driving, you know, force when I'm working on a project like this. I mean, specifically, you know, this Bighorn series is we just wanted it to feel incredibly naturalistic, incredibly real, you know, very textural. And we never wanted any of the, you know, whether that was lighting or other filmmaking, you know, devices to sort of pull you out of the intimacy of the story. So, um, you know, I guess just to give an example, like when I light a space, well, I'll, I'll back up one second. Um, so Doc's a lot these days are very interview based, right? Or there's, you know, you're always having to talk to people and that's where you get the backbone of the story, especially when it's something like this, that's a predominantly, you know, past tense story that then you're, you know, you're, you're telling and you're bringing into the present. So it is very interview based. And, and one thing that I think is really important is to try and make those interviews not necessarily feel like they're an interview, but to feel like they're scenes. And so much of that, I think, has to do with how you light it and how you frame it and, and the space that you create for, you know, the person that's being interviewed. So um, even though if you watch the series, it feels like it's, you know, lit almost entirely with ambience, it's actually substantially heavily lit. But, you know, I tend to walk into a space, flip off all the lights and then see where you know, light is naturally occurring, how it's naturally moving in that space. And then I'll just amplify that with, you know, our lights, but oftentimes outside. And I tend to also, um, you know, light with hard lights more than soft lights in general, because rather than like sticking a soft box directly on somebody, I'd rather like skip hard light throughout the space. And it gives you, I think, a, a much more like real, much more naturalistic aesthetic that, of course, you can like dial up and give, you know, the mood that you want. But it just it has a way of like creating a space. So there's more freedom of movement for the person that you're interviewing. So, you know, you're not necessarily like asking them to stay fixed. Um, and then also because the space is lit in a natural way, it almost makes it feel like you're, you know, they just sat down and are telling you a story rather than like, okay, now we're going to interview mode, you know? Right. And one thing that that does is it just gives you a much more um, cohesive aesthetic all the way through the, the series or the, the film. Um, because, you know, then your footage matches much better tonally to all the, you know, atmospheric B-roll that you'd shoot or verite scenes, all of that kind of stuff, because it feels like it's, it's in that real life space, you know? Yeah. And then on the, I guess on the camera front, you know, we shot this with the C500 Mark IIs um, and Leica R Sumo Lux lensing. You know, it's a it's a small crew on these projects. So it's, you know, my first AC, uh, Logan Kern was like fantastic on this, but it's really, it's like him and myself and we're, you know, all of camera, all of grip, all of electric, uh, right. you know, doing all of that too. So um, I need to be able to have lenses that can open up pretty wide mm -hmm. uh, because we don't have like, you know, endless lighting firepower. Um, so, you know, if I want to be able to shape that light at all, I need to be able to work it like a T, you know, T14 or something. Mm -hmm. Is there any, you know, scene or moment from this first episode uh, that really stood out to you as something that you're really um proud of how you were able to to film it um hmm, let me think about that because i shot all three episodes right. i don't really, you know think of them all that separately um i would say you know i think just across the board the the fact that you know i feel like we were able to really you know and, and i think the response from the 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 people that we filmed with um was great in the sense that they did feel very uh they did feel very taken care of in, in how we filmed it and how we approached it and and the response you know to to our time with folks 
you know, turned out really well. So, I mean, in terms of specific sequences, I'd say, you know, if, if I'm looking at it just strictly technically, um, because it was a small crew, there were a couple of sequences where we were um, basically like revisiting some of the sites where, you know, where some of um, the, the women that had gone that ended up actually uh, passing away where we revisited some of those sites and we wanted to sort of tell it in a very subtle and a very soft way, um, you know, with camera movement and in a strictly technical way um, that meant like I was on the Ronin 2, you know, with an 80 mil Sumalux lens and pulling focus at the same time on it, because again, it's a, it's a small crew and just moving through the space, trying to create these, you know, very ethereal atmospheric um, images that were appropriate to, you know, to the storytelling there. Um, mm -hmm. So I'd say, you know, I think that was, uh, that was just a, a technical challenge. I mean, you know, one of the major thematic challenges with this series in general is the fact that like, there is not resolution to a lot of these stories. And, you know, so how do you, how do you go about telling that story in a way that, um, you know, that not only like dwells in the tragedy of it, because, you know, that is like rife all the way through the, you know, the, the issues around that, but then you also want to make sure that it's balanced out with, you know, giving, um, and, and underpinning like the stories of people who are combating a lot of the issues, you know? And so I think, yeah, in terms of specific sequences, there's, there are not a lot that jump out to me as like, that was incredibly challenging, but I think just broadly and, and thematically, like, yeah, it was a tough, it was a tough series to, to tackle for sure. Mm -hmm. I think one thing that often people don't, um, may not always realize about doc filmmaking is that it's, you know, when you're covering any sort of verite scene, it's not only about like what you're watching, because basically I think to do documentary well, you need to be not just reactive, but you need to be able to predict what's going to happen so that you can put yourself in the right spot for, you know, the moment as it's unfolding and, you know, be there with the right lensing, with the right exposure, all that kind of stuff. And so anytime you're watching and, and you're, you know, doing verite work, you, you have to like figure out how to predict things. And so one thing that I really like to do that I think is, um, you know, is incredibly helpful is I'll talk to the, to the sound person and ask them to send to me, like on the IFB, I want a pre-fade mix of like all the lobs that are out there. So say you're filming a scene and you have like five different lobs out with people. I will ask them, I don't want to hear like just the boom. I don't want to hear just the lava, the person talking. I want all of them up at the same time. Okay. And that way it's like slightly crazy making because you're hearing tons of stimuli all come out, you know, come at you at the same time. Right. But what that allows you to do is to basically like triangulate the emotional space of everybody in the room. So, you know, if I'm filming over this way, but somebody's over here and I don't have eyes on them, I can still like hear their breathing pattern. I can notice like any changes. I can know if they're about to say something or if they're having like an emotional response to what the person over here is saying. And what that allows you to do then is in an unbroken shot, move the camera to them at the right time. Mm -hmm. And you know, anything you can do to keep from like having to cut is always, is almost always like a good thing, right? Because it maintains the intensity of the moment. And so that's one thing that I always like to encourage people to do is to like, you know, talk to the sound person, like you guys are friends and on the same team and, you know, just ask for that like pre-fade mix because it's really amazing how it lets you like track what's going on uh, in a scene, even when you can't directly put eyes on something. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, what's it like to be nominated for an ASC award for your work on this docuseries? Um, I mean, I, I was pretty thrilled to be, <laughs> to be quite honest. Um, yeah, I mean, I really do, you know, love and admire the work of so many of the, you know, ASC members. Um, I mean, you know, it really is like all the people whose work I look up to who, you know, and who even on the scripted side, like, 
you know, see things that they're doing and, and try and bring them into the documentary space. Um, and yeah, so I'm, I'm super psyched. I can't, I'm, you know, really, uh, looking forward to meeting a lot more folks and, you know, and being out there for the awards weekend. And, and also I'm thankful too, that, you know, the, the documentary side of things is, you know, is being recognized as well. Cause I think that, you know, there's a lot within the the documentary field on the cinematography side that's um, that's pretty cool and that's innovative and and you know so it's fun to and I appreciate the you know the recognition there as well.